Number four then from the 2009 advanced tyre. Proof by induction for a summation formula. A summation formula involving fractions. Five marks. Well, to prove the truth of this statement here for all n, and it does say that, it says for n, I'll just put it down this way, in the natural numbers, positive integers, prove it's true at the very start. So at the start when n is 1, that's the least value of it. If n is 1, what have we got? Well, the left-hand side is this part, and that simply says if n is 1, I'm going to evaluate this starting with this floating variable r going from 1 to 1, so there's only going to be one term. That'll be the term when r is just 1. So 1 over 1 plus 1, that's 1 times 2 is a half. Test the right-hand side of it. It'll be 1 over, and if n is 1, it'll be 1 minus 1 over 1 plus 1, which is 1 minus a half, which is a half. The right-hand side's the same as the left-hand side. Don't know why I wrote it that way around, but I'm not going to change it now, which means it's true for n equals 1. Now, that's an important part of the proof by induction, showing that it's true at the start. The next step is, well, it's just leaping somewhere further along. Let's just say that we're going to assume that it's true for some other n anywhere at all, n equals k. If that were the case, then simply replacing all the n's by k's, I'd have this statement which I'm going to say is true. That means that if I take 1 over this expression, r, r plus 1, and go all the way from r equals 1 to k this time, I'm saying that when n is k, this expression will be true. So it will in fact equal 1 over 1. 1 minus 1 over k plus 1. I'll call that statement 1. This is the inductive hypothesis. I'm going to use this in the next part to see if I can end up with a true statement that will result in the original form. So what I'm going to do next is consider. I'm not going to do a left-hand side, right-hand side. I'm going to consider n equals k plus 1. What would that look like? Well, if n is k plus 1, I'm going to have the sum of this expression, r, r plus 1, going from r is 1 to k plus 1. But I'm not going to say it's equal to 1 minus 1 over, because that's just begging the question. I could, however, take a note of that, that that's what I'm aiming for. I'm actually aiming to get a result which will be 1 over n being k plus 1 plus 1. I want that to be the result. So, if that's the case, I would have this. So what would that be? Well, that's just one step more than that. That's summing all these terms up from r is 1 through 2 through 3 through 4 through k and put in the next term, which is k plus 1. So that should be the same as that expression, just adding them up as far as k plus the next term term, remember that sigma just saves you writing all the individual terms out. There's only one more term to go on it, and that's the term when r is k plus 1. r is this thing here. So plus 1 over, and if r is k plus 1, it would be k plus 1 times k plus 2. Now I'm going to call in my hypothesis. Well, I said that this was equal to that. So that means that that thing should equal 1 minus 1 over, I'll just put this in a wee bracket, k plus 1, over k plus 1, k plus 2. That was using 1. That has to be brought into it, or it won't be a proof by induction. Now I've not left myself a lot of room, because I'm going to have to go through some algebraic tidying up to try and make this thing look like that. Well, the first thing I notice is they both start 1, take away but that's a single fraction, and that's not. So the next step is going to have to be combine those fractions. I'll do that by, first of all, sorting out my signs, taking a negative out, so that'll have to be minus this part. And then bring those two bits together, which, unfortunately, I'll have to bring together further up. Let us back up. Again, I've also put down what I'm aiming for. If it's true at k plus 1, then this should come to this expression with n replaced by k plus 1, which is that. So next step, let's put these two fractions together. 
Well, all I need for my new common denominator would be I'll need a k plus 1 to satisfy that. That's quite happy with it, but that will require a k plus 2. That will require multiplying by the k plus 2, so it's 1 times the k plus 2. I know we could have just written k plus 2. Minus, that's got the whole thing already, so it's just minus 1. It's getting closer. So what I've got is 1 minus over the k plus 1, k plus 2. The top part is k plus 2 minus 1, which is k plus 1. Those two parts cancel out, leaving 1 over k plus 2, and that's obviously the same as that. I'll just write explicitly that form by partitioning that expression into the parts that I want. I want a k plus 1 and a plus 1, which is what I've got, which is the correct form for it, which is true. Which meant that if it was true for n equals k, that meant it was true for n equals k plus 1. Then, since it was true at the beginning, since it was true for n equals 1, that means by that stepping stone, that inner working, that induction, if it's true for one step, it's true for the next. If it's true for one, it's true for two. If it's true for three, it's true for four, and so on forever. That means by induction, I'll put down, it's true for all n, which are positive integers, or I'm just deciding to call the natural numbers. One other thing I might do is at that point there, is to put down, that's the required result. Required result for n equals k plus 1. And there that would be it.